putting me off Naples with you drinking, you alcoholic. What? <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Uh, right then, here we go. At least look like you're taking interest in what I'm saying, you know. Taking my spare time to ask you these stupid fucking questions. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to this very special edition of Interval Conversations. Now, over the last couple of weeks, you've seen numerous videos on YouTube of our very own Nathan Hall there asking loads of questions to people from the world of showbiz and theatre. Tonight, the tables are turning and we're asking the questions to him. So please welcome, you can actually hear him now, Nathan. Hello. How are you, buddy? I'm very good. It's good to be here on this podcast. <laughs> Never been in How before. does it feel to have the tables turned a little bit? It, it's weird. It's a bit weird. Yeah, so it should be. I want you to feel as uncomfortable as possible, my friend. Like, I'm sure you've made many people feel uncomfortable when asking them questions. And especially when you get control over the editing. We have yeah. no say in it. It's all your control. So yours will look fabulous, I'm sure, and everyone yeah. else's will be looked to... I like it. So first of all, let's start off with saying you look very smart tonight, Nathan. What's the occasion? Uh, so I've just uh, recorded a duet. With one of my friends. I was, ex so. I was expecting you to say this. Well, that's an awkward but, start, but isn't I've it? I've changed and got into this jacket because I was in a different one, so <laughs> special treatment. Well, I, I'm, I'm honoured. So, Nathan, first of all, let's, let's go right back to the beginning. What gave you the idea during this lockdown to go, this is it, I want to start asking questions yeah. to keep people entertained. What, what, was, what gave you the idea? Um, so it was actually a sort of drunken night with one of my friends over FaceTime and we just ended up doing like a mock interview. I thought, this is actually quite good because I listen to podcasts quite a lot. I thought, I want to try this. And I was originally going to do 10 episodes only of this. Then I just got yeah. more and more people involved and now we're on episode 30. <laughs> I know. So is this the final one then or after? this do you feel like you could add more I'm, people to I'm it i'm done i'm done you do that that's it now. you want to go back to normality yeah so 29 interviews and you start off at 10 so that's 19 more than you planned is there any in there you regret doing uh not so much regret not so much regret oh, uh, okay uh I, I loved everyone who came on uh the, there were some episodes where i had to pry more to get an answer yeah uh, whereas people like uh, Billy Pierce, yourself, the conversation just flew. But yeah, but that's, I guess, the key to a good interview, isn't it? Being able to kind of get that extra bit out of them and being able to talk to them. And I guess when you, I suppose it must be easier for people that you already know. Um, yeah. You know, you speaking to Billy Pierce, Neil Hurst, uh, Nikki Helens, myself, you know, these are people we've, we've known each other for years. So it just flows. It's just like we're sat in a pub, isn't it? But yeah. for other people, that you didn't know, I assume that it was a lot like like pulling teeth. Is that is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, not so much pulling teeth. It's more just oh, can you expand on that? How did you fit? Like yeah, come on, give me more. And was there anybody who you wished that would have said less? <laughs> uh, probably Neil and Billy in the first episode. <laughs> Although it was brilliant. That was I quite could, a long one, wasn't it? Yeah, I could not get a word out. But. Yeah, I uh, don't think there's anyone Oh, else, it was know. good, though. I mean, all the videos have been great. Uh, if you had to choose a highlight out of all of them, what was your favourite bit? Um, oh, God. So I've, just, I've got a whole list of all the... Okay. Go <laughs> down the list. Okay, let's, 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 let's get the time out of this. Pick your favourite moment out of each interview. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We are padding the runtime. Uh, yeah, man. So, uh, obviously... First episode, getting Neil and Billy on, that's that's a highlight as it is. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, just, just the jokes Billy comes out with as well. He, he was a machine. He's a funny guy. He was a machine. And I've got yeah. loads of new material from it. It's brilliant. Um, Ethan, uh, that, I've known him donkey's years, so that was catching up with him. Uh, Jenny Arnold, uh, Obviously, that was the first episode where it, it moved away from performing and was set design. So that was a nice yeah. 
uh, turn of events and like, I've known Jenny throughout university, so that's good. Uh, Leon K, uh, West End performer, managed to get him on and he can talk, he, he can talk. But it took, I said, oh, tell us some of your show experiences. And we went through the full CV. Yeah, a lot uh, of editing there then, I imagine. Uh, originally, yes, because I, I was going to release it. Most of it is like deleted scenes at the end. Like, and I like that. When I finish yeah. this, then I thought, I'll, I'll just put the full episode out. Yeah. That got redone. Um, <laughs> there's quite a lot of these that are like, all friends or people I've met recently, done shows with. So, yeah. like, uh, Sophie Holdsworth, uh, did Kips with her in January. And we spent most of the time just laughing as we did on stage. Yeah. Uh, and I brought my, I actually brought the chair during that interview. <laughs> so I just moved back and I just heard pin drop. I was like, nobody move. Still not fixed it. <laughs> it's. I mean, is that one of those things that's going to keep repeating? Like, just maybe yeah. on YouTube, will be like a thing that just keeps going around. That, that'll be the most watched bit of the video when you fall the chair. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I like it. I like it. Um, so, I mean, you've been speaking about all these guests and all the how you met them all. You've had quite an extensive start into theatre and going forward, haven't you? I mean, take yeah. us back to the beginning. For people that don't know you, what was it that first gave you your, your insight into theatre, musical theatre, and go, that's what I want to be in? What was that? Um, it was probably pantomime. Like, if you've watched any of the episodes, you'll know I talk about pantomime a bit. I was brought up on that then, uh, like years ago, uh, mum took me and my brother to West End, saw shows, and I was like, this is incredible. Yeah. So, so Lion King and, uh, God, what was the other? Chitty Chitty Bang Bang with uh, wonderful Emma Williams, who's just been on. <laughs> Time of recording, yeah. local laughs. Come on, yeah, local laughs. Uh, so yeah, then it just extended from there. Ended up going to drama school, like a Saturday drama school. Um, did drama at a college, university, and now I do it at Dram. I've got my own yeah. little company, which yes, yeah. podcast just from. the tip productions. Yeah, just I mean. The tip. I want to ask you how you got the influence for the name, but I already know. But um, for people who don't know and aren't fans of Archer, please explain. Well, no, it's tip of the iceberg. It's tip just the oh, tip Oh, are we going with that one? Are we going with that one? <laughs> yeah. All oh, right, okay. Yeah. I, I put it down as just the tip of the iceberg, but I, I decided on it because it made me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> More than anything. It is a brilliant, it is a brilliant name. Yeah. And um, so, obviously, you've been doing these during lockdown. Things have been eased now. You know, theatres yeah. have been allowed to have, like, a soft run. I know Andrew Lloyd Webber's uh, doing social distancing at the Palladium, uh, and they've been in the press today. What about you next, then? Are you going to do some more stuff with just the tip, or is it just waiting for normal service to be resumed? Or do you think there's still a little niche that you could do some more stuff there? And entertainers? Um, well, I was meant to be putting on my version of Grim Tales this year. So that's that's been put on standby until next year. So yeah. I'm sort of keeping it safe and just spending this year doing uh, virtual premieres of plays I've adapted or written. Yeah. So I'm sort of playing it safe a bit and just getting a little bit of a following first. Yeah. Then after the workshop broadcasts I put out of premiere, I spend time just adapting the scripts. So when we do yeah. open, it, the, the script's better than what people have sort of seen already. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people I've been chatting to throughout this in the industry, and you'll find as well on your, on your podcast things, is that it's given people a chance to kind of reflect and think a bit better about and more in depth about productions and stuff that they're doing in future. Because usually in this industry, you're constantly going. There's no time to stop, whether you're yeah. here or on stage or prepping or rehearsing. I guess this kind of gave everyone a moment just to kind of stop, uh, you know, get scope and then be able to kind of think about what's next and think about stuff in more depth. Would you say that's value to you in this? Uh, yeah, so uh, if people have seen me, you know, I, I, I'm here, there and everywhere most of the time. So You sound I'm... like a gypsy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, yeah, so start this year, obviously I was doing kips, 
then I got asked to do it for Bridlington for an order performance. That was meant to do a wedding singer. I was meant to understudy Kips in Harrogate. At uh, one wow. point, I was, I was asked to play Joseph over in Bingley, I think it wow. was, or Skipton. Uh, also, yeah. asked to play Marley in Christmas Carol later on in the year. And whilst also working full time and yeah. writing my own stuff. So, the lockdown has given me a bit of a break. So, I, a chance to rest, yeah. to catch up on Tiger King kind of thing. Oh, yeah. What a weird part of lockdown that was. That's not weird. I think it made it. I think it, it made it less unbearable to begin with, to just to find out what happened to Carol Baskin. She killed her husband. Anyway, on a separate note, um, going back to your career, you know, you saw these West End shows, you've been doing Amdram. Would you say there's a highlight to when you started to now, what's been in your career or your experience? What would you put one highlight down to? This is usually a really difficult question for people yeah. to answer, but I think, I, I think you've already got one, haven't you? Uh, I've, I've actually got quite a few. Uh, as in performing wise or shows anything, that... absolutely anything. It's your podcast, mate. Do what you want. <laughs> um, got a, probably so, a couple of the roles I've played. So I was lucky enough to play Artful Dodger a few years ago with Butter Shaw as well. And I, I've always wanted to play Dodger. That's good. Uh, God. I'm just thinking back at some of the shows. Like I've done Phantom, Miss Saigon. Ghost, oh God, Kips. There's, there's too many. But I think doing Phantom, uh, I've still got a couple of the props. So I can see, yeah. Yeah. So Anthony Hollandsworth, gotta love him. Forgetting those. Somebody asked her. Yeah. Uh, so instead of highlights then, have you got any mishaps that's ever happened doing all these performances? There must be something that you've done that's embarrassing. I have many. <laughs> so give us some. Let's go with three, Nathan. Three onstage three. mishaps that you can tell us about where we can all laugh at you. Yeah. Uh, so I was in a musical called Disco Inferno in 2008. So okay. 12 years Did you have an ago. afro? Yes, I did. Uh, I will attach the photo to this podcast. Okay, I look forward to that. Uh, I honestly look like a hippie Annie in that show. <laughs> but, <laughs> now we want to see you more than yeah. ever. Let's hope it's on screen right now. Yeah, and now. I don't love Wasn't it. that hilarious? Love it, love it. You look like an orphan <laughs> from the 70s. But, uh, <laughs> Go on. Uh, the whole show is supposed to be the main character's like dream and he wakes up at the end um, and we're all supposed to run on with party poppers and like confetti that but where I yeah. ran on at the playhouse there was a smoke machine and they didn't put anything in front of it so like right. a carpet or anything so dry ice formed so me running on but surprise <laughs> And then off stage right. <laughs> yeah, I literally had to crawl off stage. There was a chaperone trying to help me, but she was just pissing herself laughing while trying to help me get off. While trying to crawl like... Argh. And if anybody has this on video or anything, you know, please send it to us. If you've got it on video, send it to us. Uh, tweet that, it I, to me, Adam Kidsmith on Twitter, and I'll, uh, I'll share it out. I think there is a recording of it, but... We need to see it. Well, while you take a drink then and think of more highlights or mishaps of your career, um, is there any that overall stand out as if to say, I can't believe I did that? Uh, it has to be Kips. Like, absolutely Kips. Because I did not leave the stage at all. I think I left just the costume changes. Like, was it it was, uh, I did a, we do a quiz every now and then with the society and I put one question in which was out of the 24 songs featured in the show how many did I feature in and I did 22 of the 24 songs wow I lost two stone stealing on... some spotlight there Nathan oh yeah I lost two stone on the show it was brilliant now I've put it all back on if not a bit more it's called the lockdown stone, isn't it? We've oh, all yeah. got it. Oh, yes. We've all got it. 
to... <laughs> now you've had highlights. You've gone sorry, mate. Go, 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 go. Okay. Uh, I don't. Okay. I don't know why I do that. No. Oh, oh. <laughs> Major, Major Tom, yeah, you there. Um, now you've had many highlights. <laughs> now you've had many highlights, and you've performed in many uh, venues and many theatres. What would you say your favourite venue to perform in is? Oh, um, it's St George's Hall or Victoria Theatre in Halifax. Both historic venues. Yeah, right. The, the amount of acts that have been on both of those stages, like Halifax, you've had Lee Evans, Neil Hurst, Michael Jackson, all those sort of people. Was, uh, Michael uh, Jackson's been on the Victoria Theatre? Yeah. yeah. No Jackson, way. Jackson 5. Never knew that. It's a little sign outside saying Never knew that. these people have performed here. Uh, yep, then you've got St George Soul, who... Like you have all the famous comedians come over. Charles Dickens performed there years ago, reading one of his books. Uh, wow. So yeah, and they're just both beautiful venues. Like the view you get every night is just fantastic. I think. I also like the Halifax yeah, Playhouse. Yeah, it is indeed. I was uh, just close. The Halifax Playhouse is beautiful as well. I think I is it Miss Saigon? I watched you in there. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. That was many years ago. Me and Anthony Hollingsworth came. And wasn't the director a guy called Adam Smith as well? Yeah, another Adam Smith. Brilliant name. Best name to have ever. Absolutely ever. Um, they're the venues you performed in. Is there any iconic venue that you want to perform in? You know, it, it yeah. would be your career highlight if you got to perform in a certain theatre. The Alhambra. Has to be the Alhambra. Really? Yeah. Keeping it local. Keeping it local because it's just... It, it's the jewel of Yorkshire, high class it has. Like, just this beautiful building in the middle of Bradford. It's... Which is hard to think about, really, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. But the Alhambra for me, that's... I want, I want to do that. Yeah. It's a brilliant, brilliant venue. Now, you spoke to all these people during your podcast. Uh, have you picked up any advice that you thought, right, I'm going to take that and do that or have you have you learned anything or have you just listened and forgot about it all um no i i've actually learned a lot um so god who was it? Uh, nikki helens when she came on she was uh, talking about like tv acting a lot and what's the what the difference is between theater and tv acting and obviously when you're on stage you have to like be big move around a lot Whereas TV yeah. acting, it's so on point. And yeah. up to that point in podcasts, I was like, yeah, just like that on the chair. Yeah, all over the place. But if you notice now, I move around a little bit, but I'm mainly focused to one point. Yeah. Sorry, but, um, edit that out. <laughs> no, uh, leave it in, leave it in. <laughs> He's a real, real boy. A real boy. <laughs> um. Yeah, so it's just stuff like that. And it's how to act backstage and during shows as well. So uh, people like uh, Leon Kay, uh, uh, Rob Marsden, Neil Erst, uh, a couple of my friends from uni, so Steph Page and Rebecca. It's just getting different perspectives from all the different professions. Yeah. And it's just good to hear what they have to say to hopefully the next generation of theatre. Not that they listen to the yeah, podcast. And but... I guess, I'm sure they do. I, I, do I, I know it might sound corny saying it to you, but I don't think you'll realise that when people are at a loose end and the, the, it feels like theatre is so far away, musical theatre, it seems mm. like something from long, long ago. People can't, you know, real, don't realise that it's actually going to come back soon, just not yet. Mm. And it's just people are missing it so much that having this little insight into it from people that have been in it whether it be am drama or actually west end you know it's it's kind of like a feel and i think it's it's such a community to be part of and you're bringing that to them so that's good oh so many episodes <laughs> just keep looking at it going. Is, is there a list there i'm assuming that there is yeah. a list there you keep looking at it <sighs> i like it I, I thought there'd be like an out of 10 score next to each of them just to kind of be a bit of a bitch. 
I might do that actually. Uh. You sh you should do and then send it out actually uh, after. Um, you sent out must have sent you sent me a Facebook message to ask me to yeah. do it, and I'm sure assuming that's how you probably reached out to a lot of people. Yeah. Is there anybody that you reached out to without saying names that turned around and went, "No, I'm all right, thanks." Uh, there was a few, yeah. Some people just didn't respond, but um, uh, who did I ask? Roy Chubby Brown, asked Rowan Atkinson, um, a couple of Broadway. How rude! How rude of them! But luckily, they, they responded. They, they, yeah, they responded, say, or the managers responded, saying, Look, they're unavailable. Like Roy Chubby Brown's manager, he said, Look, we're over our heads in podcast appearances and stuff. Try again in six oh, months. Well. <laughs> when there's no lockdown. No. But Roy Atkinson's <laughs> manager just said, well, he doesn't do them, but thank you for considering him. So, yeah. That was nice. Oh, that's uh, good. Well, I think you've had a good calibre of people in there. And I think mm. it keeps it, a lot of it's local as well, you know, like Neil uh, and Tom and, you know, Billy, who's who's no stranger to Bradford uh, stage at the Alhambra. Nikki Helens, as you said, and a, a few others that you spoke to are local. So I kind of like that you're keeping theatre local. But you're yeah. not going too big above your boots to the West End and Broadway straight away. Yeah. But I think I've got... Yeah, I've got two West End performers and one off West End, as well, or two off West End. So obviously Emma Williams. That that was a really yeah. good episode, I think. Now I remember Emma from from years ago, because um, I I used to go to Brooks Bank and then the circle that I kind of was in after she was in. Um, but then I found out only a couple of months ago that her mother, or is it a mum or a grandma? is my daughter's tutor. How weird is that? Oh, wow. What a small world. And I was like, do you know Emma? And I was like, yeah, I know Emma. I have no other. Uh, I don't yeah. know her. Not as, not as friendly as you do. Um, no. Now, you've done all this. Uh, there's more stuff in the pipeline for Just the Tip Productions. Hopefully, yeah. theatre will be back to normal soon. This time next year, where would you see yourself? Um, hopefully, producing... A couple more of my own shows, um, yeah, and just doing shows for myself. Really. So I'm going back to Andram, hopefully, and um, yeah. yeah, just focusing on just the tip productions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to be a little sound bite. I'm taking that. Um, now you're a man of many talents. Uh, do you prefer on stage or off stage? Depends on the show, I find. And how much stage time Nathan gets? Yes. And if you have to wear a wig? I mean, I, I can put you down as a good dame. I think you'd be like a great dame in a panto. I, I'm, I'm more of a comic. With the beard. With the beard. Oh, yes. Puberty is a wonderful thing. <laughs> and I'm so glad you finally hit it, Nathan. No. I was worried for a while. <laughs> now... Before we leave you uh, and let you get on with your drinking, what are you drinking, by the way? Uh, like rum and Coke. Coke. Keeping it classy up there in your bedroom with your Millennium Falcon. I like it. Oh, yeah. Teenage boy dreams. Right. Um, this, these videos you've been doing, if people are just catching this and they want to know more about Nathan Hall or about just the tip productions, where can they go? You can go to... Oh, I'll just get the logins up because I wrote them down because I keep forgetting them. <laughs> You didn't write that on your board with your names? No. Uh, so, Instagram, I'm on Instagram, Just The Tip Productions 2019. Facebook, Just The Tip Productions. Uh, I believe Twitter is the same. This is great advertising. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, you Twitter can edit it yourself, so. Just The Tip Productions, or if you're at him, mate, it's tip underscore productions. So, yeah. Just Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. <laughs> Instagram, Carrier Pigeon. Yeah, get subscribed and of course get watching all the other videos interviewing uh, amazing people, chatting about their experiences and, and chatting to Nathan. Uh, Nathan, it's been uh, an honour asking you the questions, mate. Thank you for asking me to interview you. Hope I've not made you feel too uncomfortable. Oh, no. It, it's, it's weird being in the hot seat. I now understand yeah. everyone else's problems. You just never know what you're going to get asked, do you? No. 
And you're thinking, shit, have I got an answer for it? <laughs> I've done this to 29 people. <laughs> well, more than that, <laughs> Jesus. Mate, it's been a lot. Thank you so much uh, for answering the questions tonight and keep up the great work and the great videos. You've been keeping so many people entertained through this time. And I guess, without sounding patronising, there's still so much to come from you. Uh, you're only young. Uh, many more things are on the corner. And uh, I wish you the best of luck, buddy. Thank you, Adam. Uh, and for the final time, guys, I've been Nathan, and this has been Interval Conversations. Thank you for joining in to every episode. I've been Adam Smith asking Nathan the questions. Check out the videos and this. I, I don't know where I'm going to go with that now. <laughs> we'll just go there. We'll just leave it there, yeah? yeah. Let's just go yeah. get drunk, mate. Yeah. Let's get drunk. <laughs> lads, lads, lads. <laughs> See you later, buddy.